And a point to the Longhorns. It's Patton with the air. I love how Brower is going right to her freshman immediately. Has a lot of confidence in her and wants to get her hot early. Uh, that's Clara Brower, fourth year Bulldog, and a longtime starter at setter. Jenna Winnis, or rather Avery Carlson, to serve for Texas, and leads to the kill, and that is Fisher right in the middle, stands at 6-5, the former Kentucky Wildcat and former teammate of Maddie Skinner and Reagan Rutherford for the Longhorns. Winnis, dive on the floor and keeping the point alive is Bailey Cox. Winnis again. That's long yeah. on the grad transfer, Erica Lovett, and an early 3-1 lead for Texas. Such a great high swing by Lovett there. Has a huge block in front of her in Kahawai and Singletary, but just stays confident, swings high. My mistake, it was a tip at the net, and so give the point to Georgia, and we're tied at two. Word for our crew from Jared Elliott, but no challenge. Great job in the dig by Muneke. Two of them already for Georgia. That's their long. Just wide and a rare error there by Akana, one of the better servers on this team. She definitely knows how to step it up from the service line in key situations. But history repeats itself for Georgia. We're in for a long day. They have gone to five sets in half their matches, eight of 16. Well, that's out, off Aiden Ames. It's a young player for Texas. I love to see her bounce back. She's immediately smiling, talking to her setter, like set me again, she's gonna get it next time. No airs for Ames Friday in the win over Arkansas. She's hit 350 or better in six of her last seven. Fisher serves again. Winnis right in front of Fisher for the point. And I love that play. Jenna passes the ball nice and high. Avery Carlson gets there, goes right back to her, and she just drops it right down there to the bottom of the court. And that is the 1100th career kill for Winnis going back to her career at Minnesota. Devin Kahahawai to serve. Ace for Kahahawai coming off three on Friday to tie a career high. Impressive so far. And I love what Jared Elliott says. He just kind of gives her the green light and lets her go about her day. And <laughs> That's the result they get. Carlson to Winnis. One more. Third of the match already. Winnis, such a powerful arm and just has so much range. She can go down the line, she can go cross court, but she can also just hit it right in between the block. Really great vision by Jenna Winnis right there. Akana just gets over the net. Carlson keeps the point alive. Another chance for Mineke. Halter there this time. Winnis, one more. Four already. And this Texas defense is so impressive. Kayleigh Akana. Officially five kills for Jenna Winnis on eight swings so far. Zero errors. That's a pretty impressive. Early on in this match, she has five of Texas's nine points so far. Georgia down early. They won the first set in their last four matches, though. Lost two of them, both in five sets. Mention how half of their 16 matches so far this year have gone to five. Another race, Devin Kahahawai. Her second. Such a great serve, and a serve that they don't see a lot in the NCAA. Has a lot of spin on it, kind of moves in the air, and so it's really hard to track it to the passage platform. Sort of reminds me of my broadcast partner when she was on the floor here. <laughs> I might know a thing or two about <laughs> serving that way. Maneka hangs in the air, but another chance for Winnis. Winnis again. That block has been on since the opening point for Texas. Until then, on the other end, it's Winnis getting blocked by CeCe Gooch, the sophomore from Dallas. First error of the night there by Jenna Winnis, but 
This Georgia block, that was really impressive by them, getting such great block touches, obviously finishing with the block, but just extending the play. It's not always about ending the play, but just making the rally long and trying to find a way to score. How important might that be for Georgia after Texas dominated a great long point for the Bulldogs? So great. It really builds their confidence knowing that they can really rally in these long, long points. Ella Swindle sets up Ames for oh, another dive. Bailey Cox saving another point. Couldn't get to it this time, however. Aiden Ames, the block for the Longhorns. Even though she couldn't get it done there offensively, she's a huge wall at the net, and she's going to get some blocks tonight. Aiden Ames has been such an impressive freshman for this Texas team. Does such a great job of being patient and getting just over the net. Really great move by Ames. Ames second on the Longhorns and blocks behind Mariana Singletary. Reagan Rutherford, Cox is there. From the back row, Erica Lovett skies in the air for the kill. And I love Erica Lovett's swing. She can get there and just hangs in the air, sees the block, then uses it to her advantage from the back row. Double-double in the five-set loss to Oklahoma Friday. 15 kills, 12 digs. Maneke from the Houston area to serve. That's in from Eddie Skinner. Great swing by Skinner there, and a great set by Ella Swindle. Allows Skinner to get past the block and just go right down the line. MK Patton just a little bit too far inside. Second kill for Skinner so far on two swings. A high set for Lovett, and she gets another point. Great high swing, just using the block to her advantage. Tried to go away from Singletary there. I think she, targeting Rutherford, who's a little smaller of a blocker, doesn't want to go into Singletary. Huge there in the middle of the court. Love it. Grad transfer from Tennessee. Our head coach, Tom Black, calls her our steady leader. That's long off Cox. So in the 6-2, Carlson comes in for Swindle. Kahahawai also in for Rutherford. That's a point for Georgia. And Patton, her first. And there's our freshman Patton, doing a really great job just swinging high, being confident. That's what's really important about freshmen is coming in and taking those big, aggressive swings against a really good Texas block. Missed the first six weeks of the season with a finger injury, but 20 kills in the three matches she's participated in since coming back. Still, Haugen serves it long. Close call, but Emma Halter just knows the court too well. She's really confident when she's back there calling that ball out of bounds. Skinner to serve. Kahawai, yes, 15-8 Texas in set one. And I love the way the Texas setters are just getting everyone involved early. Kahawai obviously had a great night against Arkansas on Friday, and we're definitely going to see her get hot in this game as well. And it's her first kill, but a career-high 13 Friday. Jenna Winnes has paced the Longhorn so far today. Love it, blocked, and that's Singletary. She's been the defensive player of the week in the SEC. Back-to-back -back weeks in her first block of the day. Timeout, Georgia. It's been so great to see Singletary's growth, just making such good, aggressive moves over the net and just being in really, really good spots. Four blocks, Singletary against Arkansas Friday, but Razorbacks didn't go often to their middles in the previous three matches before Friday. Singletary had 27 blocks. She has been dominant up front for Texas, especially the last few weeks. And an SEC play overall, two blocks per set to lead the lead. And she's just starting out as a starter this year. She didn't play a lot in her last two seasons. And so starting the season off a little slow, but as she's gotten more experience in games, she's just continued to grow and continued to shine. 
you talked already a couple of times about the depth of this Texas team and the balance. Playing the 6-2 helps when you have three attackers up front at all times. But when you're an opponent, how hard is it to try to find that hole in the Texas defense? Because not only offensively has Texas done really well, hitting 292 in league play coming in, but defensively only one of six SEC teams has hit better than 200 so far against the Longhorns. The Texas defense is just as strong as their offense. Obviously at the net, they just have some incredible blockers, making great moves, picking great spots. But in the backcourt, they have players like Emma Halter, Kayla Akana, Jenna Winnis back there, both setters. Everyone's just playing great defense, and they're working really well as a defensive unit. Longhorn started just 5-3, and three, then the switch to the 6-2. They've been undefeated since. And a great graphic, and this is evidence to what we just mentioned about the Texas defense. Arkansas hit 181. That's the best by a Texas opponent the last three matches. Florida and Kentucky, those numbers, those were home matches for the Gators and Wildcats, both nationally ranked, and Texas swept both of them. And those are two great teams, so that just really shows Texas' dom Texas's dominance. They're coming into a new conference, but still just able to shine and overtake most teams in this conference so far. This is the second of five straight home matches for Texas. Texas A&M here Wednesday night, ESPNU. Maddie Skinner gets the ace. Love to see Skinner scoring from the end line. She's doing such a great job at the net, but her serve is a really big part of her game as well. Eighth ace of the year for Skinner, third ace for Texas already this afternoon. Oh, they let it go and give her back to back aces now. Such a great server, and that's one reason she's so great is she can really switch things up. That first serve, she dropped it short and then was able to drive that second one deep and just kind of confuse this passing unit on the Georgia side. This time, the Georgia decision pays off as that goes long. Lovett serves. And that's long. Third service error for the Bulldogs. We're just making a few too many errors right now in this game at Texas uh, to get back in it. So I think that's what they need to work on eliminating right now to get back in this game. And just no runs by the Bulldogs. Texas's side out percentage, 89%. Jared Elliott says, I'll take 67%. He told us that earlier in the week. On the slide, Fisher, but Skinner there for Texas. Akana sets up Winnis. Love it. Second time they've gone to her from the back row, and it's paid off both times. Yes, using Love it in the back row is really, really smart, especially the Texas defense thinks it's going to go to Sophie Fisher. So switching things up, using Love it out of the back row, the Texas defense just isn't quite there ready for it. Fisher to serve. Part of a great all around game. 27 aces on the season for the graduate. Kahawai gets the kill. And that's just a textbook play right there. Emma Halter starts it off with a perfect pass to Avery Carlson, and then Devin Kahawai just comes in and puts it away. And Kahawai has just such good range, such good vision there, sees that the block is a little bit close and finds that seam. Love it, hangs with the serve from Kahawai. And Muneke gets the kill for Georgia. And Muneke is such a great player for this team, really rallying the troops out there. I think you can see that she's trying to get her team energized. They're obviously down in this set, but they need energy if they are going to try to come back and beat this Texas team. Clara Brower serves for Georgia. Mineke, back-to-back points for Georgia. What a smart play by her, just putting it right inside the block. Ada Names is reaching out a little bit too much to her right, and she just kind of gets it right in there. Nice and off speed. Really, really smart play by Mineke. Game stayed with it, but Georgia, this is their first run. Still 20 to 13 Longhorns. They need to take advantage of having Brower back on the service line right now. They're kind of getting into their groove. They're getting used to playing in Gregory Gymnasium. So they need to keep this run for as long as possible.
Second chance, Ames. This time she delivers after the great dig before by Brower. Ames recognizing that she can score on that point. Most middles would take that and get it right back to their center, but she she wants to score. She wants to be offensive, and she's going to take this swing whenever she can. First kill of the match by the freshman. Great effort. That was a Kana, but Patton gets the point for Georgia. And something so cool about this Georgia offense is due to all the injuries, they have people playing in different positions. So they're able to utilize their players at different sides of the net, different parts of the net, because they've kind of had to over the past few games. And it's really paying off. Patton there in the middle, usually an opposite, but finds a way to score. Better set Swindle, the Skinner, but it gets blocked. Gooch and Patton both there for the Bulldogs. Such a huge blocking combo with Patton and Gooch. They're just so tall at the net, but just do a great job of getting close and getting over, pressing. Madison Skinner can go high, but they're right up there with her at the net. Jared Elliott calls timeout. What was a 19-9 Texas lead is now down to six here late in set number one. SEC action's been great every week and feature matchup Friday night on SEC Network. M. Longhorns will not play next weekend. Well, tough road for Georgia all season with their injuries. They have had five key injuries this year. Tori Harper, broken leg, Makina Lim out. MK Patton, Krista Blakely, and Bianca Muneke are back. But how tough is that for Tom Black's squad, especially getting into the nitty gritty of SEC play, just trying to get chemistry with everyone? It's really difficult. You know, there's a lack of consistency on the court, so it's hard when things are constantly changing. But it's also allowed players to step up and get some game experience. So I think in the long run, this is going to help this Georgia team when it comes to postseason, and maybe more people will need to step up and get some, get some court time. Now, only two of their 16 matches have just finished in three sets. So speaking of experience, most of their matches have gone long. They won the first two sets at home Friday to Oklahoma, but the Sooners pulled off the reverse sweep and won the match in five. And that shows the depth of this conference. There's upsets happening all the time. There's five set matches all the time, and it's really exciting because it's high level volleyball. Yeah, Tom Black told us it's crazy how much better the SEC is getting every year. Says everyone's beating everyone except for Texas, <laughs> who's 6-0. The run continues for Georgia, 21-16 now. Just a slight miscommunication there by Jenna Winnis trying to get it over the net, but great up by Emma Halter to start that playoff. Maneke, sophomore from Cypress, Texas, to serve again. Oh, Mineke the dig, and then the setup, but Swindle there for Texas. That's long off Skinner, and the Bulldogs are within four. Just wide, and Skinner is just so high up over the net. Sometimes she takes swings, expecting to see hands in front of her, expecting to use the block, but she's just a little too far above them. Just goes a little bit out there. A 7-2 Georgia run. Make it 10 to 2, or 8 to 2 rather. And Jared Elliott's going to call another timeout. This looked to be Texas dominance throughout the first set. But having this Georgia team and their response pulling within three. And Georgia's doing a great job right now using their serve to their advantage. Those two last two plays, serving the ball short, trying to get Madison Skinner, their best offensive option on the Texas side, out of the play and just being really successful in doing that. So for Jared Elliott and staff, what are you telling the team right now? I think he's telling the team, let's just find a way to score. We had such a big lead, we kind of got comfortable, but let's get our foot back on the gas and let's get back in this game. It's interesting because we actually asked him about his philosophy during timeouts when we talked to him earlier this week because oftentimes, and it's happening now, now Jared Elliott gave the initial comments to the team, but a lot of times that doesn't happen. If he calls timeout, David Hunt will talk to the team and if the opponent calls timeout because Texas is on the run well usually associate head coach Eric Sullivan is the one to talk to the group so Jared Elliott does use his staff very well during timeouts but those first 15 seconds it was Jared Elliott I think as you just described just trying to get his team to be able to end this run and pull off this first set comfortably right I think 
he definitely just told the team, let's play Texas Volleyball. Let's pick it up. That's what we do. Uh, this Georgia team's doing a great job going on a run, but let's go back to what Texas does great and just play our volleyball. The Bulldog hitting percentage is now better in this first set than the Longhorns, but Texas still up three, 21-18. Yana Maneke will continue to serve for Georgia. Always able to take big swings and big moments, and she definitely did it right there. Just so much power behind her. And the server for Texas, Emma Halter, will give it a shot. Beautifully placed, Cece Gooch. Such a smart play, realizing you can't take a huge swing on the ball, but being smart, knowing Emma Halter is deep in the court and just placing it right over the block. So a chance to tie off Bailey Cox's serve. This was 19-9 Texas not long ago. Brower to love it. Yes, 22 all. And these Georgia pins are doing such a great job of using the Texas block. They know that they can't swing straight down into it, but they're being smart, aiming high, clipping just the top of the fingers. And the Texas defense is just too sucked in the court. Can't get those defaults. High set for Skinner, got it blocked, and Georgia leads, it's Fisher. And that's what Fisher does best. She comes in and she makes a difference. She's hyping her team up and just also making great plays with the net. Well, when is the last second decision to let it go pays off? That's a risky moment to take that chance right there, but she's an experienced player. She knows the court well. Really great decision by her to let that ball go. 23 all, and Avery Carlson will serve for Texas. Set point, Fisher again. And what a comeback Georgia's had this set, and it makes sense to go Sophie Fisher right there. When you're at the end of the set, when you're in these tight moments, when you're trying to beat Texas in the first set in their gym, you always need to go to Fisher. Reigning SEC Player of the Year, over 1,000 career kills at Georgia. She began her college career at Kentucky. And now That's impressive, especially doing it on Texas's court. I think Texas got a little comfortable there. They felt their lead. They felt like they had it in the bag, and Georgia did not let that happen. Bulldogs reason to be excited. Jenna Winnis and company will now need a rally from A 15-3 run by Georgia to end the first set and take it 25-23. Logan Eggleston, what was the biggest reason for the Bulldogs' success? Well, Georgia just settled in. They started playing their volleyball, but they did a great job from the service line, just switching things up, going short, going deep, and really stressing out the Texas passers. Erica Lovett, six kills on nine swings to East Georgia and the reigning player of the year for the Bulldogs. Sophie Fisher stepped up late with a couple of kills as Georgia stuns Texas in set one. And Texas is just making a few too many errors there at the end of that set. A few hitting errors, a few errors in the passing line. And I think they just need to calm down, go back to playing their volleyball, and just try to eliminate those errors, especially at the end of the set. Eight errors overall for the Longhorns. They hit just 118, and Georgia hitting 324. I mentioned before, only one of six SEC teams has hit better than 200 in a match against the Longhorns. And that was South Carolina earlier this month, who got swept by Texas here. That serve just out off of Bailey Cox and the first point of set two to the Longhorns. I think Texas is going to use this early part of the game to their advantage. They got up early last game, weren't able to keep that towards the end, but they're definitely going to try to start that strong again. 
blocked. Skinner. And there's the Maddie Skinner we have been missing. She's just so dynamic at the net, does such a great job up by herself. Singletary wasn't there, but just able to press and block Patton right there. First block of the match for the All-American. Good serve by Halter to Cox. Blocked again. Singletary this time. And the Texas block is what makes Texas who they are. And so I love to see that it's coming up. It's it's showing up in this game. And great move by Mariana Singletary just being over the net. And great setup by Reagan Rutherford. Approaching 80 blocks in the year for the sophomore. Swindle. Rutherford catched up to it. Now they try Skinner. That's in, a block, and it was Fisher. And we can talk about the block on both sides. They're just such dynamic players there at the net. And Sophie Fisher doing a great job of getting out to Patton, closing that block, and she knows Madison Skinner pretty well. They played together at Kentucky, so I think she can see <laughs> what Maddie's going to do and find a way to stop her. Rutherford, Skinner, Fisher, all part of that national championship squad in Lexington. Long off Skinner. She wants a review, thinking it was touched up the net. Right now, Point Georgia. And will Jared Elliott show the green card? He will. So Texas challenging this last point. You can see Maddie Skinner immediately turning to her bench and saying, but well, that was tipped at the net by a Bulldog. Original call, ball was out. Texas is challenging that there was a touch. And I love that Jared Elliott just instantly trusted her, instantly went and got that challenge card. Does it hit the finger of Fisher? Hard to tell there. It's a close one. Fisher's just so high up over the net, so it's definitely close. She definitely matches Madison Skinner there with getting up over the net, but I'm not sure if I saw a touch there. From that angle, hard to see any finger move. Same there. Has to be conclusive evidence. Had a touch Sophie Fisher on its way out. There was a touch, so the call will be reversed. Point Texas. Texas will retain their challenge. Wow, pretty impressive challenge call there by Jared Elliott. So Texas gets the point. It looks like Sophie Fisher immediately looked at her team and was like, yeah, I touched okay. that. So I think she I think she did get a touch on that. Maybe it was pretty small, but she admitted to it there at the end. So 4 1 the Texas lead. So Avery Carlson will serve. Hawaii, Cox the dig, love it again. And Halter, that's the fourth touch, so Georgia gets the point. That almost worked in Texas' favor. Really scrappy there, just popping arms out, trying to get the ball back and over the net, but just unable. And a great swing by Love, it just powering through that block right there. Skinner finds the opening in the middle. Smart play. Teams are used to seeing Madison Skinner hit the ball really hard, right? And so when she slows it down like that, they're just not ready. Everyone's on their heels, unable to get underneath that ball. Fifth kill for Skinner to match Jenna Winnis for the team high. I was tipped at the net, so Maneke gets the point. I think you mentioned settling in, the big key why Georgia took the first set, and even though they're down 5-3 here, they don't look to be as scrambling as much as they did in the early portion of the match. They definitely calmed down, found some comfort in this gym, and just going back to playing their game. Oh, Halter keeps the point alive. Muneke. 
Skinner, then Carlson. Winnis over the net. A great effort by Fisher, but Texas gets the point. Such a great transition, and sometimes the dig doesn't have to be perfect. That's what's so great about Texas, is they can really utilize anything. Madison Skinner gets hit pretty hard there, but just keeps the ball up. Avery Carlson with one arm, and Jenna Winnis just being smart, placing it right over the net. A kind of deserve. Free ball, Ames takes advantage. So much power by Ames, that ball is impossible to dig. And Briar was up, she tried to get a block in it, but Ames was able to power right through her, and maybe even right over her. And so much excitement from the freshman, you'd love to see it. Quick start in set two, like Texas had in set one. Led 20 to 10 even, but Georgia the 15-3 run to end it. Nuneke, long, point Texas. Even though it's long, I love that swing by Muneke. Coming from a non-setter, coming from Erica Lovett in middle back, but still being confident in taking those swings. You have to be aggressive in this gen if you're going to try to take down the Texas Longhorns. Kahawai gets the point for the Longhorns. And Georgia calls timeout. And I think Georgia's just unable to stop the Texas offense right now. Just there's so many keys that are really showing up today, and it's it's hard to stop them. Longhorns hitting 444 this set so far. Longhorn started just three and three, but the switch to the 6-2 system has led to an eight. 8-0 run by the Longhorns, and Devika Hawaii a big part of that. Well over two kills per set. Sophie Fisher gets the point out of the timeout. Sophie Fisher from the back row, and that's what makes her such a special player. She can really do it all. She's hitting the slide attack. She's hitting fastballs in the middle, high balls in the middle, but also hitting out of the back row, playing defense, serving, and she really just does it all for this Georgia team. Fisher, one of three Bulldogs who played here in the 2022 NCAA Tournament. A Texas sweep in the second round. It's long off Winnis. And Emma Halter goes to the bench and asks Jared Elliott to challenge this point, and he will. I love the way the Texas players just turn around with so much confidence that they look at Jared Elliott immediately. Ball was like, out. Texas is challenged it. There was a touch. Teams get two challenges. However, if you win the challenge, you retain that same challenge. So both teams still with two. Right now, this is a Georgia point and a 9-5 Texas lead. Last time Texas lost, September 15th at Stanford. Just saw the graphic earlier, an eight-match win streak since. Of course, last year, Texas started 5-3 and three and then rolled to the national championship, going 23-1 and one to end the campaign. Right, the season's starting to look a lot like last season. They're definitely coming into their own in-conference play. Started off a little shaky in preseason, but starting to look a lot more like a solid full team. Here's the point that's been challenged by Texas. Looking for a touch at the net. But Patton and Gooch are the block. Call is going to be reversed. There was a touch on Georgia. Texas point. Uh, Texas will remain. We'll keep their challenge. So Jared Elliott's 2-0 and on challenges so far today. Here. Yeah, it looks like the right hand of CC Gooch there got the ball. Great challenge by Jared Elliott. 
So give Winnis the kill. She surpassed the 1,100 kill mark in her career back in set one. Devika Hawaii and the Longhorns up 10 to four in set two. Another ace. That is the third for Kaha Hawaii already today. And she's just become such a weapon from the service line. Started off slow from the service line in this season, but just has so much confidence back there. And Jerry Elliott just lets her do her thing. Ties a career high. Fifth Texas ace overall today. Aims there for Texas, and the Longhorns are rolling in set two. Everything seems to be going the Longhorns' way in this set, but like the last set, they have a huge lead here. So Georgia can turn it around if they focus in and go back to playing their volleyball. Tom Black calls timeout. They're second already this set. Such a great serve, and something unique about Devin Gahawai's serve is the spin on the ball. In the NCAA, we don't see a lot of jump servers who utilize their wrists to their power. And she's coming in with just a new look that most teams are not used to seeing, and it's working so well in her favor. 12-4, Texas lead in set two. Georgia taking set one, 25-23. Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on the SEC Network, the latest episode of True South. John T. Edge will travel to Jasper, Alabama, to Brown's Deli and Package Store, as well as Bayou Fresh Seafood. He'll also meet the Johnson and Evans families and hear father and son stories about how Jasper, an old coal mining town, has evolved. That's True South on the SEC Network Tuesday night. Tom Black has used both his timeouts here in set two. His team rallied to win set one after being down 20 to 10. He'll need a similar rally here in the second set. Right. Georgia can come back. They've done, they obviously showed that in set one. So they just need to calm down. I think they're getting a little frantic. Texas is doing a lot of really great things. So they need to go back to just trying to slow down the Texas offense and try to get some offense going on their side as well. Longhorns hit just 118 in set one, but they are at 500 so far. Here in set two, Lennox and Skinner pacing the Longhorns and kills. Devin Kahawai, three aces for the Longhorns as well. Three aces, and it's only the second set. Three aces is, I think, her, her career high, yep. so we'll see if she can overcome that today. Yep. Had three on Friday and three in the win at LSU. Whistle, and Georgia gets the point. That violation there by Ames, and a big break for Georgia here. Maneke was one of the servers who went on a run back in the first set, so we'll see if she can get it, get it hot again for her team. Our head coach calls her our warrior. 14 aces on the season. Swindle sets up Rutherford. Great effort by Brower, but the point goes to the Longhorns. And Rutherford with her first kill of the day. Sometimes she's a little quiet to start the match, but she always comes alive. She's an experienced player, done so much for this team so far this season. So we're definitely going to see some more of her on the offensive side. Yeah, over a thousand career kills. Third team All-American the last two seasons at Kentucky before transferring to Austin. That's long off Lovett and another Texas point. So much power from Lovett there. She came in swinging and just missed the block and hit it a little bit far out of bounds. When a second on the team and aces will serve. Point Georgia. And that's Lovett again. And Lovett is doing, doing it all right now. Such a great player. And I love how she's continuing to take swings even after making errors sometimes. And that ball was dug and she's still up there ready to take a big swing at the net. That's wide off Ames. Point Georgia. But the Texas side thinks there might be a touch there, but I don't think Jared Elliott saw it at all. Not pressing his luck on this one after winning his first two challenges. Cox to serve again. Yeah. 
just out. And Muneke looks back at the bench. And in fact, Tom Black already had gone to the challenge card before his team <laughs> pleaded with him to do so. So we get another review here at Gregory Gym. Yeah, he the original call ball was out. George is challenging that there was a touch. He needed no convincing for that one. He was already there, ready to pull up that green card. These are so hard to see live. Happy for the review system here because if you're just looking to see if this even hits the tip of a finger. Ames and Skinner the block. Hard to tell from that angle. Look, we'd be looking at Ames' left hand. Just joining us, Georgia with a one set to none lead. Texas at one point led set one, 20 to 10, and the Bulldogs came storming back, winning 15 of the last 18 points to take the set 25 23. It's been all Texas so far in set two. Let's see if this angle's any better. Definitely close, looking at Ames' left hand right there. Maybe her mm -hmm. pointer finger might have gotten it just a little bit. Mammo for one of these today, but it looked like it hit the finger from that Ball angle. Ball is being reversed. There was a touch on Texas. Georgia will retain their challenge. Both coaches doing a pretty good job from the, the challenge perspective. Georgia gets the point. Here they come again, creeping back. Now just down 14-8. It's an experienced group. Cox to serve again in her fourth year as a Bulldog. Skinner can't get to it, and another oh, Bulldog no. point. And this is what the Georgia team does. They slowly creep back in. They maybe didn't start the set super, super strong, but always find a rhythm in the middle of the set and can challenge big teams in the SEC. 4 nothing Georgia run. Point to Rutherford. I mean, you need to find out, go to your experienced player. Reagan Rutherford has been in big moments, has been down, has been having to break a run before, so really smart set there by Ellis Little to go back to Rutherford. With a whole lot of court in the back, Rutherford sees it and delivers. That's such an experienced play right there. She gets a nice touch on the block, realizes that the Georgia defense is in shallow covering their hitter and just puts it right there deep in the court where no one is. Great touch and just puts it back. No one's there. Service error for Halter. And it's 16-10. Georgia came back from much more of a deficit last set. So they're used to being in these moments. They're, they're very calm. They seem calm. They seem ready. They had their leader, Sophie Fisher, out on the court. Yeah, they may have played the most sets of any team in the nation. <laughs> Just two of their 16 matches coming in have gone the minimum three. Skinner. That's as much power as we've seen from her this set. Right, there is the power of Skinner. That's what, one thing that makes her so great. Her all-around game is incredible, but she just has so much power at the net. She can really elevate over the block and overpower anyone on the other side of the net. Jared Elliott. Often gets asked, when are you going to play Maddie Skinner six rotations? He says, I don't think we need to at this point. We've had such good balance. It's good to give Skinner a break now and then. Carlson sets up Skinner. Winnis keeps the point alive. Skinner makes it over the net. Dig Carlson. Point to love it. And a great swing. Way to be patient on the Georgia side. Texas doing a lot. Nice big swings, but they're patient. And that's just such a great swing by Love It being getting up and elevating right through that block. Single Terry just a little bit late there. Tenth kill for Love It on 18 swings. 
Blocked. Fisher was there. And that's Kaya Tyson coming in as a blocking sub. Brower just on the smaller side as a setter, so Tyson comes in sometimes to block and really pays off there. That's wide off Lovett. Skinner back to serve already with two aces this game. So see if she can get in a run here for Texas and really pull away from this Georgia team. Kahawai the kill. And Kahawai is just automatic. Whenever you set her the ball, she's going to get a kill, especially in the cross court. She has such a great swing in between the block and just doing an incredible job from the right side of the court. I haven't gone to Devon as much today, but she has her fourth kill of the match. Oh, Winnis keeps the point alive. Kahawai. Love it, the dig. Mm. Miscommunication there as ball sails over Winnis. Texas still has a pretty good lead here, so they can be, they can experiment a little bit, they can move around a little bit, but they have to know Georgia wants to come back. They're capable of coming back, so they need to lock in right here and find a way to score. Point Texas, how about Carlson able to catch up to the ball and feed Singletary? Such an experienced setter, can just do so many things. Obviously playing in the back row, so she's there at the net, has to avoid the net, but also can't dump it over. And such a great play, and great job by Singletary of being ready and recognizing that her setter is still going to be able to set her the ball. That kind of serves. Haugen, the dig, fight at the net. Haugen feeds Maneke. Carlson gets it over the net, and then Ames is there for the Longhorns. What a point. And somehow it goes to the freshman. What an interesting point there. I love the very interesting series of events, but definitely went in the Longhorns' favor, and Ames is just so good at staying engaged and just getting over the net right there. Neke, another point for Georgia, her fifth. Such a great job challenging the block. She had the huge block in front of her in Ames, just got blocked by Ames, but still going right through her and powering through the block. Free ball leads to the point, and Maneke's there once again. I'm actually not sure who hit that ball between the two of them. <laughs> but definitely worked in their favor. Georgia aimed at set one in a 15-3 run. And to do something. Getting, using her body to her advantage. CC Goode stepping into set. But using that little sliver of line to her advantage. Serve hits the net. And Georgia's going to get the point as Halter, a great effort, but rolled into the, or into the other side of the court. Here comes Georgia again. They're within four to the league with the arrivals of Texas and Oklahoma. But it wasn't like the league was well behind really any others heading into this year. There's eight teams from the SEC in the RPI top 40. No surprise, Texas leads the way at six. But going all the way down to Ole Miss at number 39, eight in the top 40 right now. And now the Tom Black's Georgia team is healthy. Curious to see how much better they can make their RPI as the season goes, goes along. This conference is just so strong and they schedule hard. These teams in this conference have played some major competition so far and it's been really cool to see such high level vol volleyball across the country, but especially in this conference. 
So Georgia with the last three points to get to within four at 22-18. Neke serves again. Jenna Winnis, clean kill for the junior. And that's a great response by Texas. Kaylee O'Connor with the perfect pass to Ellis Wendell. And Jenna Winnis doing what Jenna Winnis does, going up and just crushing the ball down the line. Longhorns two points away from set two, and Winnis will serve. Service error. And again, that's a few errors from the service line from Texas at the end of the set. They were doing a great job at the beginning, but. One. As Cox will serve for Georgia. Skinner sets up set point. Such a good line shot by her. She's just up, elevating over the block and able to really choose wherever she wants to find a way to score. It'll be Emma Halter to serve for the Longhorns. Great response by Texas there in that second set. Georgia was coming back, but they shut it down immediately. Really successful in that second set. So after Georgia rallied to take set one, no such run at the end of set two. We're a set of peace in Austin. And again, the, the Georgia offense is so cool because they use the net so well. They move people around. Gooch is right there behind the setter on that play, and Texas is unable to stop her. She's from Dallas, and to the left of us, there's about 15 fans with shirts with Gooch on the back, a number of family and friends that made the trip to Austin. That's an ace. And Cox makes it 4-3. And Halter and Winnis are a really great passing unit for Texas, so it's rare that you see a ball drop in between them. Can they see it? Winnis, just too late in a 3-0 Georgia run. That's a hard play to recover from. It's a great touch at the net by Kahawai and Singletary, but when everyone's kind of looking around, no one knows where it is, it's hard to get that ball up. Georgia played five and a loss to Oklahoma Friday after winning the first two sets. Singletary, her fourth kill. So much power there, and I love Carlson setting the ball, giving her a little bit more height. Singletary gets so high up, and so she gives her a little bit more height there to get up and on top of the ball and around the block. Blocked! Sophie Fisher. And I think that comes from them playing together because Sophie Fisher made such a dynamic move to her left. Sees Madison Center coming, and then just jumps right back there in the court. Knows that Skinner likes to hit it towards the libero and likes, does a great job protecting her. Six blocks for Fisher today, over 100 on the year. Dig by Haugen. And then Cox keeps the point alive for Georgia. Ames, no question there. Three balls to their advantage. Kahaha White does a great job of managing that. Carlson is up, Ames is ready, and it's just hard to stop the middle of the court from Texas. Third kill for the freshman to go along with three blocks today. Kahaha White serves. Just out. Close call there. Kahaha White has been so successful from the service line today. Three aces to tie a career high. She and Carlson come out. Swindle and Rutherford in. Ace for Lovett. And a great serve there by Lovett, just driving it deep in between two great passers in Akana and Halter. It's the first time Georgia's had a lead early in a set. They won set one, but after being down 20 to 10.
Swinnis gets the point. Nice set from Swindle. When is such a smart player, but great job by her. I've been advised that that sets coming from all the way on the other side of the court. She comes inside a little bit and able to use the block there. She's so successful from that pipe attack. And I think Rara's going to continue to go to her. But she has just so much power, can come, has such a long runway, and can hit the ball so hard. Rutherford gets the point for the Longhorns. Rutherford really starting to show up in this game. Did a great job of aiming down the line there, finding the court. Fourth kill of the day for the senior from Missouri City, Texas. Halter serves. Swindle keeps the point alive. Oh, point Georgia, Muneke. Muneke just has so much power, but great hustle there by Ella Swindle. Emma Halter coming in, getting that ball up, and Swindle right there behind her. Seeing Emma Halter just really great job identifying that. Ella, Ella Swindle just stays with the play. That's what makes her so great. That's why she's on the court. Jerry Elliott talks about just what she gives to this team. She's a winner. She wants to be out there. She plays hard and not chose it right there. Eight kills for Maneke so far today. Is this the best we've seen the Georgia attack so far since the start of set three? I think so. They're they're showing up. You know, I think they have some confidence now. They're in this gym. They feel comfortable. And so their attackers are taking big, risky swings. Their, their coverage is there, and everything's really going in their favor right now. Both these teams over 500 so far in set three. Point, Texas. Skinner was there, but I believe the ball was in the net off of Lovett. It's like, but I like Lovett taking that swing. It's out of system from the back row. 25-23, Texas 25-19 in set two. That's an ace, and Georgia's back up. Muneke again. And a great serve there by Muneke, just driving in the halter deep. They've done a great job from the service line, being confident, and driving balls deep. And Starting to work with him. This might be a run. Don't be fooled by Georgia's two and four conference mark. Been ravaged by injuries until the last couple of weeks. Nice dig, Halter. Kahahawai. Oh, Cox dives, keeps the point alive. Skinner. rushes to save it. Murray, who gets the point again? What an impressive play on both sides. I think that's the longest play. The defense is incredible both ways, both in the backcourt and at the net. There's been some incredible block touches, and defense is running everything down. As much buzz as we've had here at the Greg in some time today. And that quiets the crowd down. They go back to Gooch for another point. This is the first time we're seeing Georgia really showing up at the beginning of the set. Texas has taken the lead in both sets, but they're coming in swinging from the start. Cox has been awfully good with her serve today. Singletary, another kill. She's up to five blocks and now five kills on five swings. She's been perfect. Such an impressive player and loving both setters going to their middle over and over again. And Singletary again has a little bit higher of a set, allows her to get up and elevate so she can really go in any direction. Fisher. Got that in. Georgia back up. Looks like the oh. ref called it out, so it looks like we're going to get a challenge here. I apologize. Yeah, the initial ruling was a Texas point, but instantly Tom Black. The ball was out. Georgia's challenging that the ball was in. Yeah. Immediately, Tom Black asks for the challenge. But right now, this is Texas. First time we're seeing just really back and forth play. Really. Steady level of play on both sides. Both teams are really showing up in this set. I think going 
going one and one, they, they know it's anyone's game at this point. How impressive have you been by Georgia? Coming up a heartbreaking setback, the reverse sweep by Oklahoma just two days ago, but giving Texas all it can handle so far. And they've had some, some battles this year. I think they, as a team, have talked about just having to bounce back. They're doing that today. Another the call is reversed. Uh, the ball was in. Georgia retains their challenge. And looking live, that looks again. As we'll see on the replay, Georgia does get the point to make it 14-13 Bulldogs. No question. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely, and I don't even see it hitting the white at all. Yeah, that's even inside the line. So both teams are 2-0 and on challenges, so they still have two remaining. Sophie Fisher, reigning SEC Player of the Year, four kills, six blocks today for Georgia. Experienced player, she's been here for a long time and she knows her team trusts her, so she's going up and taking a big swing. I'm not sure how much she expected the second set of that point coming from Carlson. Back and forth, third set. Georgia gets the point. I was tipped at the net by the Longhorns. 15-14 Georgia looking to pull off the upset and win in Austin. the score. Jenna Wynn has started off hot and I want to see if she can really pick it up in this set. Love it serves. Halter chasing it. Catches up to it. And Akana keeps the point alive. And blocked! And they all go to Emma Halter despite the block. What an effort by the junior libero who was limping just a little bit, but one heck of an effort to help give Texas this point. So much hustle. That's what makes Emma Halter so great. She's obviously great on the court defensively and passing, but her hustle and her effort is what sets her apart. Halter has checked out. Fisher with a kill for Georgia. And a great response there by Fisher and the Bulldogs. After a pretty crazy play by the Longhorns, the crowd was really into it. They immediately just shut it back down. And good news, Halter's right back in. She just had to adjust her knee pad. <laughs> so now she's ready to go, but her team down 17-15. As we get to the late portion of set three, Fisher serves. Long off Skinner, and the Texas deficit is three. Just wide there by Skinner. I think she was trying to go towards CC Gooch's block that wasn't there. She was a little bit late, wasn't fully over, and so Skinner went right past her. As Fisher's gotten better, so has her team today. She'll serve. Skinner gets the point this time. A great response there by Skinner, still challenging the block, doing such a great job, but Georgia's done a really great job of managing Madison Skinner. She's definitely the most offensive player on the Texas side, and I think Georgia came into this game knowing they needed to shut her down, and they're doing great so far, but she can still find ways to score, just like that. It was Brower catching up to the ball after the good halter serve. Now Skinner gets a chance. Brower sets up Fisher. Nice dig, Halter. Kahahawai got it from the back row. Back-to-back -back points for Texas. They're within one. 
And it's rare that you're seeing opposites in the back row, but when you have Kaha Hawaii back there, why not use her as an offensive option? Just doing such a great job of elevating and getting right past that block. Been some nervous tension with this crowd today, but sensing a Texas run. Here's Halter serving again. Singletary gets it over, and we're tied up. And a great bit play there by Singletary, just identifying the open part of the court. The Jordan defense is a little bit deep, expecting her to swing hard like she normally does, but she takes a little bit off of it, and it works in her favor. Tom Black calls timeout. The last three points for the Longhorns, and we are even at 18 in set three. This is a battle. You know, both teams have really shown up, and both teams have been proven that they can win this game. So it just depends on who really elevates the next few points. You were a four-time All-American here. When you see the effort of an Emma Halter on that point, just a couple of minutes ago. What can that do to an entire squad? I mean, it turns the momentum around, right? I think the confidence of the team grew, the energy of the team got even more intense. When players are making plays like that, it makes you want to play harder for the teammates around you. And so I think that play is really rallying the Texas side. It has been almost 10 calendar years. In this game, they look calm. They look like they're not frazzled by everything going on in this gym. And they're, ready, they're here ready to play and ready to hopefully and potentially Take down the Texas Longhorns. Finishing matches has been the issue for Georgia. They won the first two sets Friday, but lost in five to Oklahoma. They were up two sets to one at Alabama October 6th, but lost in five. At Arkansas, they actually came back from two sets down to force the fifth set, but lost 15-12. So it's been the finishing kick that's been the issue for Sophie Fisher and the Bulldogs. What do they have today? Can they pull off the major upset in Austin? They go right to Maneke out of the timeout, and Georgia's back on top. That is definitely a really good start to the run late in this set. Maneke's ninth kill, love it. Pacing Georgia with 13. 31 assists by the setter Brower, and she serves. Brower the dig off Singletary. Again, Muneke, another point. And Georgia just doing such a great job in transition, digging balls nice and high, non-setters stepping in like Lovett right there, and then just being really aggressive at the net. Such a great swing, using the block to her advantage. Brower serves it into the net. Her team still up one late in set three. Not the best timing for a service error like that, and Texas is really good at the end of sets, so we'll see how they step it up in these moments, and Carlson always seems to be on the service line late in these sets. Brower, nice job to keep the point alive. She gets to it yet again. However, the swing from Lovett into the net, and we're tied at 20. And we saw that same play a little bit earlier in this set going out of system to love it in the backcourt with the same error. So I think she needs to find a different way to get the ball over the net there. Oh, Halter, another great dig this set from her. Blocked! Singletary, third block of the set. Texas on top. And Singletary doing such a great job closing that block, but Kahahawai set it up perfectly. Emma Halter doing what Emma Halter does with a one-handed dig, and then the Texas defense just getting set up and crushing that ball. That's out off Gooch. It's a 4 nothing run. And the Texas block is coming alive. They are up there. And Muneke doesn't really know what to do right now. So great timeout call there by Tom Black, just trying to get his team back together, back focused to the set. It's been an uphill climb for Texas, but now up two, very late in set three. Jared Elliott squad hoping to go up two sets to one. Well, you can see the depth of SEC volleyball. The challenge Georgia is giving Texas today and on Friday night, really good to take the lead late in set three. Such an impressive player, so much talent, but 
her effort is what sets her apart. She always is running things down. She's sticking her arms out. She's finding ways to get the ball up. And she's really rallying this team right now. Her defensive effort is what's bringing the energy up in this gym and on the court. Eight digs for Holter this match, but it seemed like half of them have come at pivotal moments. Can Texas finish this off and take a two sets to one lead? And then what would Georgia's response be? Because I think you'd agree they have played well this set, but too much Texas the last four points to go up to. Right, they need to find a way right now to turn this around on their side. And they have the advantage. They have three great players up in the front row, so it'll be interesting to see who Brower decides to go through. Go to. Fisher is on the bench, but Patton and Gooch among those up front for Georgia. It's Avery Carlson who will serve again for the Longhorns. Ace for Carlson. Bounces in, barely in the back corner. And what a time to do it. The crowd is on their feet. They are so excited for Carlson for getting an eighth in this moment. And all of a sudden. And she definitely is the next member of MBU and going to go on to have a really, really successful career both here at Texas and afterwards. But. The Texas block is what set them apart in that set. They were kind of slow in the first two sets, but the block has really come alive. So how does Georgia respond? They were up 2018 in set three, but the Longhorns won the last seven points. That's a good response. I love it as Georgia gets the first point of set four. Love it seems pretty excited about that block, and Georgia's done a great job of containing Madison Skinner. Again, they know she's one of their biggest offensive weapons, but they, they're on her. They're on it. They're blocking. They're making her really work. Singletary got it blocked by Gooch. First two points to Georgia and set four. And you've said it, this is an experienced Georgia team. They have three players who played here in their 2022 NCAA tournament lost to Texas. And then you add players like Erica Lovett, the grad transfer from Tennessee. Not a young group at all. Block Singletary once more. And they're just going back and forth, block for block. And both teams doing a great job of making really good moves, being over the net. And I think the attackers need to focus on using the block or going around the block and not going straight into it. Free ball, Singletary there. Off the Skinner serve. She just has so much power and is just so quick getting up. It's really hard to defend that ball. But again, the work at the net from these middle blockers and these pin attackers has been so impressive early on in the set. Singletary, seven kills on just 10 swings today. That's wide. Georgia leads early in set four. Georgia almost unable to get out of the way there. They had a little bit of traffic over there on the right side of the court, but really great job of getting out of the way of that serve. Bailey Cox, another one of their seniors to serve. Long off Kahawai. She thought it was touched at the net. Point goes to Georgia. A little high there. She's not sure there might have been a touch. Jared Elliott just has one challenge left. He lost one in set three. He's going to trust his team on the floor and challenge this latest call. Original call ball was out. Texas is challenging. There was a touch on the block. And watching it live, I'm not sure I saw a touch there, but you know, when you're down on the court and you're that close, you see things much better. Looked like it hit the right hand, not to love it, but the other Bulldog who was there on the block. I think that was Gooch, or rather, I'm sorry, Fisher, but this is a much better look. Oh, definitely a touch there. That left pinky, sorry, the right pinky of Sophie right. Fisher there. 
So this should be. Call is going to be reversed. There was a touch on the block. Texas retains their challenge. So Texas wins the point. We're tied at three early here in set four. Alcorn seemed pretty happy about that one. Devin Kahawai was pretty confident turning around to Jared Elliott. He was maybe a little unsure, but definitely happy now that he caught a challenge on that ball. That's her 10th kill to lead the Longhorns. Just two errors. Kahawai hitting 444. A kind of serves for Texas. Love it. Kill number 14 for the graduate from Newman, Georgia. Like you said, she's such an experienced player coming into this team and taking swings, showing that experience. That's so that's such a high, nice high swing. Had a big block in front of her, but Madison Skinner was a little bit too shallow in the court to dig that ball. Winnis. Good effort by Cox and Nuneke. But Winnis gets the point. And Winnis just does such a great job down the line, just opening up to the cross court and then bringing the ball back around her body to, t to hit that line. And many times, right sides are just not ready to dig that ball. Brower fighting for it with Winnis and wins the battle. Brower, she's a little bit undersized, but love to see her get up and not be scared of the big Tall, Aiden Ames right in front of her. A rare kill for Brower, her first today. <laughs> nice effort, Haugen, but Winnis gets another point. And Winnis just does such a great job on Addison's yeah, balls, has great patience. That's a nice high ball from Emma Halter coming from almost the end line, but she waits on it, does such a great job of creating a nice, fast approach to the ball, and then the Georgia team is unable to dig that. So Swindle checks in for Carlson, but Texas playing the 6-2. Swindle, eight assists today. Carlson with 26. Ace for Winnis. Such a great job, just dropping it short right there in front of the libero. Mixing depth is what makes Texas such a great service team. First ace for Winnis today. See, eight now for the Longhorns as a whole. Winnis the dig from the back row. Rutherford got it blocked. Fisher, seventh block today. And Luneki there just doing a great job of being patient and setting up the block. You got to give some credit to the pins there, just getting out there, starting with a great swing and then just getting set and back engaged. And such a nice block. This Georgia team will not go away. Six all in set four. Long off Skinner. That was a little bit inside there, so forced Skinner to come inside. She was a little bit too deep, so unable to get her feet there to that ball. Fisher, the reigning SEC Player of the Year, serves this one long. I love it though. She still has a smile on her face. You can tell that the team just responds to her calmness and her leadership on the floor. They trust her, and even though she makes errors sometimes, they always know she's going to come through for her team. Wendell the Singletary, but the dig by Fisher getting down. That's long though off of Lovett, Point Texas. Like you said, Fisher playing defense. Like I said, she can do everything. And it's really cool to see a middle attacker back there playing defense and not being scared to hit the ground. At six foot five as well. Blocked. Ever since the start of set, set three, Singletary has taken over in the middle. She's come alive as a middle blocker today and doing such a great job of just 
being stopped and making good decisions. And she's just so far over the net. Gooch had no space to work with. Another dig win us. Rutherford gets a chance. Yes! <laughs> Biggest lead for the Longhorns this set. A great, nice, high cross-court shot by Rutherford, but talk about Emma Halter and her setting. She's so good at stepping in and giving her, all of her attackers, the ability to score. Swindle gets down to keep the point alive. Muneke, clean kill for the sophomore. And Texas started this set off pretty strong, but Georgia's right there behind them. I think they came they came in swinging, and Muneke and Love have really shown that they're in this to win it. That sails long <laughs> up for hour. Two early mid serves by Georgia, and I think both times they're aiming for Madison Skinner again, one of their main attackers on the Texas team, so trying to find a way to take her out. Carlson was the part of the 7 0 run to end set three to give Texas the 25 20 win. Cox got it over the net. Oh, and from the back row, that was Brower to keep the point alive. She was the only one there. Skinner. She's been up and down today, but they keep going back to her, her ninth kill. Such a great setting decision by Carlson there. Singletary was also up, which kind of tricked Gooch in the middle, so Madison Skinner had a one-on-one -on -one there out on the pin. Texas looking for their 79th consecutive home win against a conference opponent, up in set four. It's been a really nice effort from Tom Black's Bulldogs. However, they're down four in set four with Texas leading two sets to one. This is the eighth meeting all time between these two teams. All have been in Austin, Georgia's never won here. And the Longhorns coming in 78 straight conference wins at home. Got to go back to October 25th, 2014, since they lost a conference match here. Devin Kahahawai got it blocked. Muneke, you just knew this Georgia team wouldn't go away, and they get a key point off the Kahahawai swing. And even though they're down right now, they're still playing so calm, and Muneke is one of the players that is playing calm. She got a great block there, but she turned around to her team with a straight face, like, we're still in this. Skinner, double digit kills for her, the third Longhorn to have 10 or more kills today. Such a balanced offense on the Texas side. So many players able to come alive in big moments. And Skinner, one of those players, so good at just elevating and going high off the hands. Freshman N.K. Patton gets the point for Georgia. Such a great swing by Patton. The set came from all the way across the court, and she stayed patient there and able just to find a little bit of space on the line outside of Jenna Winnis' hands. Patton and Fisher both on the floor at the same time. Both stand at 6-5 up front. <laughs> Tremendous dig by Cox. Patton gets another point. Georgia within two. Again, Patton, just so much confidence as a freshman, has a huge block out in front of her, an experienced block, but being confident, just taking a nice big swing. And look at this dig from the clock, just right in her lap, but just makes it perfect. Love it, turns on to set it, and there's there's Patton just putting it away at the end of the day. All team you see went back to Cox after that point, and she serves. Skinner pokes it over. Smart play there by Skinner. There's a lot of chaos kind of going on in the middle of the court, but she, so smart, always finds a way to put the ball down. 14-11. Kaylee O'Connor to serve.
another point for Patton. They keep going to the freshman and she keeps delivering. Right, why stop going to her if she continues to score? And she's scoring in so many different ways, going down the line, going across the court, going through the block. She's going to be a player to watch for many years to come. 14-12 is the score. Texas up here in set four. Dig. Another chance for Texas. Carlson sets up Kahahawai. Blocked. That was love it. Georgia's within one. We spoke so highly about the Georgia Middles and what they're doing from the defense side, but these pin hitters are doing a great job of setting up the block. Love it. And Muneke have just done so, so incredibly shutting down Madison Skinner, Devin Kahahawai, and so many other pins on the Texas side. Haugen serves. Chance to tie, love it, got it! Even at 14 and set four. One at a time on the Georgia side. I think that's what they're saying to themselves right now. Being down against Texas, they've just slowly crept back in one at a time, staying calm, staying consistent. It's working so well for them. Haugen, five aces Friday and the loss to Oklahoma. Into the net. <laughs> This is a break for Texas, especially with Devin Gahawai going back to the service line. Arguably the best server on this Texas team in the last few matches. She had three aces early, ties a career high. Here she goes again. What a heady play by Brower. I love when setters just take it into their own hands right there. And she's not a player who usually is offensive, and so. The Texas defense just wasn't ready for it, but I'd love to see her go up and just be so aggressive at the net. No one was really expecting it. She really got up there. Senior from the Woodlands, Texas, split all four years of Georgia. Tough serve. Winnis gets to it, however. Love it. Sets up Muneke. Ames gets the point on the slide. And a great identification there for Carlson. Didn't win his dug the ball, was out of the play on the ground, and she knew she had to go back to Ames, and she really delivered. Such a nice swing by Ames being up and ready and getting out of the way of the ball that was coming right back out of bounds where she was. Well long off Love It. Too much power from Levin there, but she has to be aggressive. She's trying to go for that block there. And sometimes it's not going to work for her, but she's going to keep swinging hard. As we inch late into set four. Halter there for the dig, and then it's Rutherford to keep the point alive. Muneke, swindle, got her fist on the ball, but Georgia gets the point. Such great hustle there, Reagan Rutherford able to pop that up, and Emma Holder does such a great job of staying in the play. Such a great dig, and people are all, all over the place trying to get that ball over the net. Fisher serves. She leads the team in aces. Eight and aims. Second kill, the last three points from the freshman. And Ames knows how to show up. She really does step up in big moments and take really big swings. Takes really confident swings, and this is one of them. Halter will serve. Two Bulldogs chasing it. Love it. Is able to get to the ball. Georgia keeps the point alive here. Tough play though by Gooch. But they're back to the net. It goes out. Just why, but such great hustle on the Georgia side. They are not letting this set end anytime soon. They're fighting every second. 19-16. Texas six points away for the match. Georgia calls timeout. College Hoops right Friday with 13. She has 10 so far today, Logan. Doing such an amazing job. And we talked about her at the beginning of the game. And she's just showed up like we expected her to, both from the service line and at the net. And I think 
her setters want to keep going to her. She's scoring in so many different ways. She's dynamic and it's really impressive to see the way that she has grown throughout this season so far. We talked to her after the win Friday and she admitted that it was really tough for her to wait her turn. She spent her first two seasons here rarely seeing the floor. But now that she's a primary part of this Longhorn attack, especially as the season's gone along, 23 kills over the weekend. Hitting percentage has been consistently high for a while now. And she's talked about how it was hard to sit behind so many great players, but she got to learn so much. And so now that she's on the court, she has so much experience because she practiced against some of the best players in the country in this Texas gym. And it's really showing off today. She's an incredible player, big part of this offense, and definitely going to take even more of a role as the season goes on. The Ha Hawaii double digit kills. Jenna Winnis, by the way, a double double today, her third of the season. She's had 11 kills, 10 digs. Crowd trying to help Emma Halter and the Longhorns finish this off. 11, what a job to keep the point going. Muneke though into the net. We love the cover plays, especially against a team like Texas. Georgia has to cover their hitters. There's so many great blockers on Texas' side, so great job by Lovett of being engaged there and popping that ball up. Georgia does not have a timeout left this set. Gooch gets it to land in front of Winnis. An interesting set there by Brower. She's been going a lot to her pins, but really smart switching it up using her middle attack to her favor. Many family and friends here. She's from Dallas. Fifth kill of the afternoon for the sophomore. A Rutherford, how did that land in the middle? A little off-speed shot there by Rutherford. Not her full power, and it worked out. The Georgia defense was too deep. They're ready for that really aggressive swing, but she just pops it in a little bit short, slows it down, and finds the court. Look in her face. She said, I got him. <laughs> she checks out. Carlson checks into Sura. Gooch got it blocked. Singletary, block number 10. She has continued to improve every single game she has played this season with 10 blocks today. It's so impressive. But she's reading the game so well and just over the net. It's so hard to get past Mario and Singletary in the middle. Longhorns three points away. Dick Halter. Skinner. Cox was there. Skinner again. Got it to fall. Texas two points away. Even though Jordan is doing all that they can right now to be to send Madison Skinner, she always is able to find a way to score. Many nervous moments here for this Gregory Jim crowd, but now they're on their feet as Avery Carlson will serve again. Just wide. A close call there. Great, great see by Cox seeing that's going out of bounds. Muneke to serve for Georgia. Ill timed error. Texas has match point. Madison Spinner back to serve. Already has two service and aces, so it'd be nice to see if she can finish this with an ace. Seven blocks for Mariana Singletary today. Like I said, she just continued to elevate her game in a great way to end the match tonight. Logan, most of those 11 blocks coming in sets three, and Texas goes to 7-0 in league play. Such a great job by Texas. Georgia came back. They showed that they could fight. They showed that they wanted to win this game, but Texas came back and played their game. They all showed up.